During the leaner times of life, including after a disaster, it would be essential to ensure you get all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients you may need in order to keep your immune system in peak condition. That's why I like to explore the options available to me in my own countryside. One day, it'll all come back to the plants. Today I'm going to take a look at the humble old gorse bush. There's about 20 species of gorse, which is also referred to as wind, broom, or furze. It's F-U-R-Z-E. I'm sure we're all familiar with the sight of it. Mostly found on the moors, common land or waste ground. And it usually thrives on dry, sandy soil. Known for its ferocious thorns and its green limbs and its yellow flowers. It grows across the UK and much across Western Europe. Although it can also be found in some states of America and in quite a few places around the Southern Hemisphere. So, let's look at some gorse bush facts and get them out of the way first. So, it's a legume like beans and peas, which are found strange at first, and of course, subsequently, it's a member of the pea family. It's got a kind of uh, coconut smell to it. It's a year round plant and it grows to around the six to 10 foot mark. So, you can actually eat the flowers themselves and the flower buds. And they're high in protein too, which is a bonus because every little extra helps. But they don't store well. So make sure you eat them pretty soon after picking them. Don't leave them overnight, for instance. They'll probably be at their best between early spring and all the way through to late summer. And that's when, you know, flowering will be at its peak. Don't overeat them though, because they do contain a slightly toxic alkaloid and they can aggravate your stomach. Same with everything else, don't overeat. You can also put them into salads or make them into a tea. And this is what I'll be doing today. I'm just gonna pick a few first. So, like many other plants, Gorse has its medicinal qualities and properties and supposedly can aid in the treatment of jaundice, uh, scarlet fever, diarrhea and even kidney stones. It might be a good idea when picking the flowers that you wear gloves because the spines are very sharp, believe me, and they prick you quite, quite easily and quickly. Also look out for the white maggots that uh, may the white maggots got little black heads and they live amongst the flowers. If you find them, just get rid of them. Or maybe if you want to, keep the maggots and use them as bait for fishing, for instance. Grab and pinch the flower heads and you can eat them straight off. Go for the top ones, and preferably the open ones, as they won't harbour any nasties that may be lurking inside. Don't eat the brown or tinge ones though and avoid picking along dog walking routes, especially the ones below waist level. Because it may not be just the dogs that urinate on the actual bushes themselves. Uh, so whilst on a forage, for instance, you may even find uh, Britain's greatest bird's nest, for instance. And that is the nest of the long-tailed tit. Absolutely magnificent bird, to, bird nest to see. I didn't find one today, I'll post a picture here of an example one that you can find. Okay, so we're going to make some tea today. And I've got my uh, flower buds there. And let's get the, the water going. The way I'm going to do this is to um, Heat it up with the petals in it and do a rolling boil until I'm ready for the consistency to be right and then drink it. So. Got my train gear stove. Nice little compact unit, perfect for a quick 
day's hike. Just get that going for a sec. I don't want to put too much water in there because I've never done this before, so a bit of an experiment to be honest. A bit of a stir. We'll just whack that on there. So, while that's heating up, we'll just go through some, uh, some facts, some uses. So the yellow flowers and the extracts from the bark were historically used to make uh, a yellow dye for woolen products for instance. It can be made into a tea like we're doing here and has even been known to produce a wine and even an additive for Irish whiskey. The seeds can also be used as a flea repellent by means of soaking the seeds and of course it's very very flammable due to its high oil content so it burns intensively hot so it makes a good natural source for burning in fact historically bundles of gorse were used to treat traditional bread ovens and when it does burn there's little uh, very little ash that comes off it if you want to make a bushcraft wooden spoon for instance they're great because the actual uh, wood itself is non-toxic and in past times, folk used to bind together gorse and heather to make uh, sweeping brushes uh, uh, of some jute, jute twine, which they would use for, which they used for binding straw bales. It's not just edible to humans either. Wild ponies, sheep, goats, they can be seen gingerly eating uh, gorse out on the heath and the, the, the thinner stems seem to be eaten first. It's rich in a protein so it's a good source for the food source for animals. In fact it was even used by farmers decades ago as a feed for their livestock particularly in the winter months when other feed became scarce or, or not available. It can also be used to make a quick, uh, rapidly deployable security fence, which can also be used to protect animals and livestock from predators and the elements because it's so dense and prickly. During the hot summer days, if you're near any gorse bushes, you can sometimes hear the seed pods popping in the heat of the day. This is their method of scattering themselves across for the next generation. Some other uses for gorse are as a fertiliser additive, a soil stabiliser, um, a building material for mud houses and roofs, and even as a makeshift chimney sweeping brush. And finally, <laughs> my favourite, and apparently the good old days, folk used to drape their wet washing over them, over gorse bushes, because the prickles will stop their clothes from being blown away. So let's quickly take a look at this now. Let's get in there. It's almost to a, it's almost to a boil now. All these skills, they're all being forgotten about. So that's one of my motivations for making this sort of video. It's to keep the flame alive, keep the knowledge going. So you know, share the knowledge. So it's almost boiling there. I suppose there is other ways I could do this. I was going to um, put the, um, the leaves and petals themselves into a, a bandana, close it off like a tea bag effect and then dip it into the boiling water but I'm doing it this way instead.
makes no odds I suppose. Okay so I think we're there. Between picking them and putting them in this water I did um, give them a quick rinse off to make sure there's no nasties on them such as uh, any bugs that I didn't want to eat and so on, you know, bits of grit or bits of dirt that have fallen in amongst the bush and amongst the brushes that have made their way onto it. So that's that, I'll just let that cool down. So what I'll probably do with this now is drink this and while I'm drinking it I'll eat the leaves and swallow the leaves at the same time. So you know, you can eat the leaves and the buds, so why not? Let's have a little taste. Quite nice actually. <laughs> As with all teas, I suppose, it tastes a bit like um, a bit like green tea in a way. It's got a bit of a coconut smell on the uh, the actual leaves and buds, but that doesn't transfer into the, the tea itself. Yeah, pretty nice. So, you know. It makes a good tea high in protein and obviously I should imagine other vitamins and nutrients. <sighs> it actually smells a bit like hay. Anyway, beware and this is a warning. Gorse has a sinister side. People have died from a superbug bacteria that lives amongst some bushes. So dangerous that there has been recorded cases of people dying as a direct result from it. And I'm talking about the spines and the prickles, not by eating the flowers and the petals. The disease, which can be caused by several different types of bacteria, is one of the fastest spreading infections. In severe cases, Death can occur within hours. In fact, there was a place in the southwest of England called uh, Woodbury Common, which was used to train our Royal Marines commandos. It was here an 18 year old Marine was killed by a gorse toxin. The bacterial infection in his leg mutated into the supertoxin just hours after he grazed his leg. The infection, although it's very rare in Britain, it nevertheless still exists and it gave rise to its nickname, the Woodbury Rash. There's no known cure and it's immune to antibiotics. However, the immediate application of an antiseptic cream or TCP may prevent it from entering the body. The advice is simple, if you develop a rash or redness, or you feel at all unwell, go and see a doctor. Tell them about your concerns and tell them that you have been in contact with gorse. It is reputedly more toxic than MRSA. So, that's it, that's the gorse bush, wind bush, furzy. Hope you enjoyed the video, until next time as always folks, good luck.